Hello, today we will discuss necrosis. We earlier discussed a form of cell death apoptosis in the previous video. What is necrosis? Necrosis is defined as a localized area of death of the tissue followed by the degradation of that tissue by the hydrolytic enzymes which are liberated by the dead cells. So the dead cells, they liberate the enzymes which lead to degradation of the dead tissue. And this is invariably accompanied by an inflammatory reaction in contrast to apoptosis in which no inflammation was seen. So the causes are mostly pathological like ischemia, infections due to chemicals or trauma. Now the gross appearance of the part, the affected areas are sharply demarcated from the healthy tissue. They can be of white, gray or yellow color. Microscopic appearance. Each cell, they show eosinophilia. The area of necrosis shows eosinophilia. The cytoplasm stains darker red in color. The cells are swollen. And they contain different type of vacuoles. The cellular shrinkage was a feature of apoptosis, whereas cellular swelling is a feature of necrosis. Now the changes in the nucleus, these are very particular. The nucleus shows condensation, which is known as pycnosis, fragmentation, known as karyorexis, and also the may the nucleus may disappear which is known as karyolysis. Now there are many types of necrosis. They can be coagulative necrosis, liquefactive necrosis, caseous necrosis, fat necrosis and there is one more type that is fibrinoid necrosis. So we will discuss each one. First is the coagulative necrosis. This is the most common type of necrosis, mostly seen after any ischemic injury. Due to any ischemia in the body, where there is no blood supply, there necrosis takes place. It is of coagulative variety. Only in case of brain tissue, it is of liquefactive variety. In this type of necrosis what happens is that the each cell borders the architectural outlines they persist but the details inside the cell they are lost so as the architectural outlines persist we can uh, look for what type of tissue we are studying now why this this happen this happens because there is denaturation of structural proteins not only there is denaturation of the structural proteins, there is also denaturation of the enzymatic proteins. What happens? The enzymatic proteins get denaturated and because of that, the further degradation of the structural proteins is inhibited. Therefore, some of the architectural outlines, they persist. So, microscopic appearance we discussed earlier also architectural outlines are present cellular details are lacking this gives a tombstone like appearance the dead tissues they remain in the body for a long period and ultimately they are removed by macrophages now this picture shows there is a viable renal tissue we can see it shows a proper architecture now there is a necrotic part it shows that there are architectural outlines are present but inside the cellular details they are absent the nuclear details they are absent and also there is inflammatory cell infiltrate which you will see in all type of necrosis now the second variety second variety is liquefactive necrosis also known as colliquative necrosis this mostly takes place in infections bacterial or fungal and also takes place in uh, brain during ischemia okay now why does this takes place it is due to powerful hydrolytic enzymes and we earlier studied it is seen in infarct brain or in abscess cavity it is like a pus formation so grossly the affected area is soft with a liquefied center material is frequently creamy yellow because of presence of dead leukocyte and is called as pus 
Microscopically, we will see necrotic cell debris and macrophages, and here there are no architecture outlines which are preserved. So this is the picture, this is a brain tissue, we can see normal glial tissue over here and this is the area showing liquefactive necrosis where no cellular details or architecture details can be seen. Now next we go to the caseous necrosis. What is caseous necrosis? It is seen mostly in the cases of tubercular infections. It can be seen in other uh, fungal infections but mostly it is particular to tuberculosis and it shows the features of both coagulative as well as liquefactive necrosis. Now grossly how it does it appear? It appear like a dry cottage cheese. It, uh, how is it? It is soft, granular and yellowish. Microscopically the necrosed foci they are structureless eosinophilic and granular debris is seen. We must remember what happens in tuberculosis is there is a granuloma formation and what is granuloma? It has a structure then in the center there is necrosis, there is dead tissue and the dead tissue is mostly of the caseous variety and it is further surrounded by epithelioid cells interspersed with the giant cells of Langhans or foreign body type variety and they are further surrounded by lymphocytes which are further surrounded by fibroblasts. This is a typical granuloma. Now we can see that there is a caseous necrosis. This is, caseous, this is a cut section of granuloma. There is a caseous necrosis, there are epithelioid cells which are slipper like, then there are giant cells and then there is presence of blue blue dots which we are seeing, these are the lymphocytes. So the eosinophilic pinkish mass which we cannot identify what is it is the caseous necrosis. Then the slipper shaped cells, these are the epithelioid cells, then there is the a giant cell and then there are lymphocytes then there is fat necrosis it is seen in during acute pancreatic necrosis and traumatic fat necrosis which is seen in breasts what is pancreatic necrosis there is liberation of pancreatic lipases from injured or inflamed tissue this results in necrosis of the pancreas as well as the fat deposits which are present in the peritoneal cavity. Now due to this there is fat necrosis and the leaked out free fatty acids they combine with the calcium and form calcium soaps which are known as saponification. Grossly there is yellow, white and firm deposits sometimes due to saponification calcium soaps they can impart necrosed foci of firmer and a chalky white appearance microscopically the necrosed fat cells they have a cloudy appearance and inflammation is present and if there is calcium soap formation so the calcium appears as amorphous granular and a basophilic material this is a picture showing a cloudy appearance then last is the fibrinoid necrosis. It is characterized by deposition of fibrin-like material. It is encountered in various examples of immunological tissue injury. It is mostly seen in autoimmune diseases and fibrin-like material is present. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Ask any queries regarding the topic in the comment box. And thank you for watching it.